Hello there, it's Mike. And Katie. And we're coming at you with episode 117. What are we talking about today, Katie? Let them fight. On this episode of Cup of Rad. Hello, listeners. <laughs> How's it going? Hope you're well. Yeah. All the crazy weather we've been having everywhere. Yeah, we've been having some really weird weather. Our weather is crazy. Then, like, the southern United States is all frozen right now, which is strange. And, like, yeah. we just had massive hail. We've had freezing yeah. polar vortex across Canada. It's been it insane. wasn't nearly like it was cold. It was cold, but, like... It kept, wasn't nearly kept, as bad. They kept teasing snow. They were like, it's going to snow. It's going to snow. Snow again. And then Mother Nature was like, pshh. Not today. You know what's interesting? It was so much warmer. Like it was, it was freezing outside, like zero degrees. And, but at the same time, it felt so much colder because it hit, the humidity had increased again. Yeah. When it was really, really, you know, super negative, it there was no humidity. My hair was full of static. Mm. Oh my goodness! So. Uh, I'm happy to have the humidity back, um, but it was actually it was surprising how cold it was. Right? Uh, yeah, we didn't get the snow like we want. The, they were the southern us, United so. States got it. Yeah, right. It went to <laughs> Texas instead. You know, whatever. There's places there that have had no power for a couple of days now. Mm, that's unfortunate. Like it's really bad. It's um, when you can't listen to us, which is even worse. I know, right? Like that's a real loss. Yeah. That's, yeah. I know what you're you're really worried about. You know, is the you lack use, of podcasts, use your, use your not phone the heat power. or fridge or anything. We'll but. keep you warm. <laughs> that's right. Warm and toasty inside. Exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, the cockles otherwise, of your heart, bro. <laughs> the cockles. <laughs> uh, otherwise, uh, what's going on with you? Anything well, so new? the Justice League trailer dropped. Yes, that is just a whole lot of action. And what I love is that I really still don't know what's going on. And I think that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. It should be like, I want to watch the movie to find out how all those scenes fit together. Yeah. Not like I watched something and I can kind of see the beat and see the beginning, middle and end in the trailer. Yeah. You know? So I'm excited. That's not too far off. It's only a few weeks away. Yeah, I'm super excited. Now it's just so. a matter of figuring out how we can get it. Yeah, because it looks like it's going to be on a certain streaming service in Canada versus just being... Um, on demand like all the other dc stuff yeah so we might have to get the canadian hbo just for that which you're not. like priming me for all the things i'm trying to find i'm trying to find like you know if we got to do it for for the month i like i want to make it worthwhile so i just don't want to uh, it's easy to add the channel it's I'm hard to get rid of it forward to calling them and being like no i really do need to cancel this and they're like no but what if i give you this and like i'm gonna sneak it in there that you know yeah you get it for half price for the next three months or something i'm like it's still more money than I would expect to spend. So yeah, I, I'm just hoping that there'll be some of the other um, Warner Brother HBO stuff or Warner yeah. Brother stuff. If the, if the other one, like if Kong is on there, then you know, and then we can rewatch uh, Birds of Prey. Yeah, stuff so. like that. So we are going to be watching, of course, the uh, the original cut, um, and it'd be interesting. I'm excited to see those back and forth. Justice League. Oh, okay. Uh, at the same time for that, right? So Yeah, yeah, we're hoping to do that back to back. Sorry, that was um, not original cut of Birds of Prey, because that's, uh, I think, the look of your face. Yeah, I was your confused. Face. I was like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> we didn't watch a director's cut or anything like that that I'm aware of. Um, but yeah, the trailer. So. so yeah, so that was pretty cool to see that. I don't know if you're excited for it or not. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to see if this goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, what if it does turn out to be amazing? Will Warner Brothers put the money in to try to get people back to try to take that universe somewhere? Or is it still just... This I don't think the, so. I think this is like it's one-off piece this of is like... This a swan song? Yeah. Um, I don't think, even if it is a magical hit, I don't think Warner Brothers has the ability to uh, cohesively make a plan to find you know do something again with all of those people I yeah but if it's a hit wouldn't it be good to say oh crap we were wrong and it would do be something? i don't trust them <laughs> at all it would be good though but you know it's not like Kavil's really doing anything um or affleck so uh you know could be could be yeah, who knows? Who knows? I would love for them to actually make a plan and something, you know, work together and everything like that. I, I would love that. So, any other trailers? Anything else? No? No? No, I don't think there was. So there was a new there was a new teaser trailer for Godzilla Kong. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, I watched. yeah, yeah. Um, 
so that one's very exciting yeah well sure. that's that's so. what we're all about right now we're getting ready we're getting primed woo, woo. prime for some godzilla versus kong action yeah in a few weeks so uh, i yeah that's the only other trailer there so yeah, no. Uh, oh, we got more DuckTales that are coming pretty new soon. New DuckTales, yeah. Very excited about Leading that. Leading up to their finale, the series finale. <laughs> it's going to end off with a 90-minute movie. I'm so sad. Um, it's had a good run. It's but had a you know what? Run. They're they're going to leave all their on top. So. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's one of the things where I was thinking about it, and I was like, I don't think we're ever going to see. But then the realization where all these old cartoons – had like 90 episodes yeah. but they were like one season or two seasons or three right yeah. um but i don't think we're ever going to see shows like that with like 90 or 100 episodes no um, when it comes to animation well and in some of those too they were actually over so many years and yeah i don't think they're willing to put that much time into it and i don't because yeah, I don't think they trust that people will follow along with it. The attention spans, too. but I also I think it's yeah. coming down to like syndication. Oh yeah, totally. And because it's that's not something like before, you know, that you had you had you know, say gummy bears, mm-hmm. and they would literally bounce here and there and everywhere. Yeah, and they'd have high adventures that beyond are beyond compare because they were the gummy bears on multiple stations. Yeah, and it didn't. And you had that syndication money, right? Yeah. Uh, now it's just your own station or your streaming service mm-hmm. and that's it. Like yeah. you don't have anything else Yeah, and it doesn't tie into any licensing for, for cereals or, or McDonald's toys or, yeah. you know, TV has changed so much. So, so it would I, only makes sense that w- how it's produced has also changed yeah. as well. Right. And then also it's, if you go over so many seasons, then it's like pay, raise it auto, auto raises for voice actors. So if they keep it under four, then. I'm wondering when the union will try to push back on that because they, they see that, okay, well, we're just going to cap it all the time, you know? But at the same time, is it really a bad thing, too? I mean, they really make sure they put in all their creative juices into the that yeah, oh, totally. that little bit there. So, But know. I guess at the same time, though, is like shows from the 80s and 90s, they were still like maybe three seasons but they had more episodes they yes. were they were, you know yeah like animaniacs like, is almost 100 episodes in three seasons yeah right yeah you're right so what what is the definition of a season you know right? anymore because so. now with streaming eight episodes is a season right that is true which and and so that's the interesting thing with the idea that if it goes over say four seasons well then is it it should be based on episodes, amount of time right there's lots of hinky things. Yep. yep it comes yep. to people and money. Man trying to take advantage. The man. The man. The man. <laughs> uh, so any toy excitement. There's always toy excitement. So much. Toy excitement. Um, you know what? I got my Super 7 Wave 2 Leonardo and Bebop arrived. Woohoo! So, uh, and you, if you've been listening to past episodes, you know that I'm all about Super 7's ultimate slime, especially when it comes to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mm -hmm. of that variety. Um, The figures are fantastic. I love the 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 look of them. Uh, They take all that nostalgia and they 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 amp it up. I think out of the two, Bebop is my favorite. Mm Only because, you know, the the turtles sit at six inches. So the ultimate line is a seven inch scale. The turtles sit at seven inches. Uh, Bebop comes. Yes, yeah, sorry, six inches. Uh, Bebop comes in at eight inches. He's a behemoth. So it's really cool to finally have him tower over the turtles like you want it to be, mm-hmm. you know, versus the old line where everything was the same size, you know. And they try to justify by saying, well, it's because he's squatting, right? Like That is the lamest excuse ever. Right? Oh my goodness. Yeah, so the detail on this this guy is amazing. Like all his his jacket, they make the the the, the different materials have a texturing that make them look like different materials. Yep. And and the detail of the paint and everything is just I'm just I'm blown away yeah. by how well detailed they are yeah like it's it's fantastic other than the fact that he's huge too the 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 zippers are painted like everything is painted 
Uh, the buttons on his vest are painted. Yeah, you can you clearly know. see that they are buttons and what's on them. Yeah. You know, and any other toy would have just been part of the vest color and, and would have think, been mold. I think it. that's one of the things that makes that Ultimate line special is that maybe they don't have the best articulation. Yeah. But what they do have is attention to detail, mm-hmm. right? They have enough articulation that it makes them fantastic. But then, yeah, that detail level where it's like if it's sculpted um it's painted well and it's right? more enjoyable to look at then mm-hmm. you know it's it's more interesting to be like oh look at this and look at this and look yeah. at this you know yeah it, some articulation is great but then there's too much articulation mm-hmm. too that takes away from the essence of a visual mm-hmm. part of it there's some characters that, that are cooler to have more articulation than like others. spider-man yeah. yeah you want you want that you want him to be able to like you know, Mayfax like just yeah. crunched down, right? But you know, a, a lot of those, uh, someone like Bebop, it wouldn't make any sense. No, nope. the only so. thing I wish Bebop would have would have been a bit of an ab crunch. Yeah. But when we were looking at it, it probably doesn't have the ab crunch only because the head is heavy. So it comes with two heads. One's painted with pink, and then one's painted brown. Um, it's the exact same. It's just different paint app, different, you know, mm-hmm. both look really cool. I'm probably just going to stick with the pink one because it's the most resemblance of the toy. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're heavy little pieces. Like, mm-hmm. so that's probably why he doesn't have an ab crunch because it would have like. And what would, you know, okay, yeah, it'd be great to be able to move him a little bit, but it's better that he stands, stands up. Stands up, doesn't go keep face planting because like, I was oh, impressed. This is awesome when they just roll over and <laughs> keel over all the time. So I was cool. impressed with that. You know, I just, I took him out of the box and I was able to just stand him and he just stood. Yeah. I didn't have to move his legs or anything. He just stood. Now my Leonardo though, I'm a little disappointed. Uh, his, his right leg uh something's wonky with it i'm not quite sure what's up with it mm-hmm. um it's looser it's um, a little longer than it's the other. longer and looser uh so hopefully that's not a ongoing issue with the line mm-hmm. just kind of one but i he's able to pose and the pose i have him and he stands uh his swords are freakishly long <laughs> like they're almost as tall as him it feels like <laughs> so uh but you know what uh i'm excited shredder's coming yep uh, he is in the mail. He's in the mail. He's lost in Europe, probably <laughs> somewhere, because it's FedEx. Yeah. <laughs> uh, had to go to Sweden first. Right. Had to take a, take Shutter's a uh, big It makes big sense trip. to go from New Jersey to Sweden back to Canada, right? Yeah, yeah totally. Sh- Let's go from, like, Colorado to... <laughs> no, it's from somewhere in... It's New uh, Jersey. Okay. I believe it's over there. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. That's funny. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, Super Seven. They make a really awesome product, and they've got some really cool things um, coming up. I'm still waiting for when the Thundercats Wave Two drops. I know that they're behind on those, um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but you know, I'm having a lot of fun with those figures. They yeah. just they bring back all that nostalgia. Well, you right? know what I realized too is for me that was the turtle design that I knew. Yeah. You know, we we didn't watch the cartoon. I, we ha- me and my brother had toys. And so to me, that was what the turtles look like. Yeah. I remember even when you first got your turtles that were based on the cartoon, I'm like these. OK. And I didn't realize how different they were from the cartoon. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. toy line. Right. Yeah. I'm like these. What? These don't look like the toys yeah. like I had type thing. I'm like, OK, this the cartoon. You, know, you don't realize how different they really looked in their faces and everything. And uh, so to me, there's I, I think I even love these even more than anything you've had. Yeah. Because. They have that nostalgia the for me nostalgia, as well, right? Yeah. You oh, know? yeah. No, because uh, it's Varner Studios. They sculpted the original uh, TMNT stuff for Playmates. Mm. You can actually find them on Instagram. Uh, and you can see they've been sh- they've been actually sharing a lot of like um, maquettes and stuff like that. And like the, the before pre-painted oh, okay. um, like tool tooling and of some of the old uh, TMNT, Toxic Crusader. Nice. That kind of stuff. Uh, so it's really cool to see some of those. And yeah, they're, it's vastly different. And that's what was cool about that first line of the 2012 Playmates figures. Mm. They they didn't look like the show. They look like the old, um, right? Those ones mm. up there. On the top yeah. of the shelf there. Yeah. They look more like their own thing, right? Yeah, you're right. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, I forgot about that um but totally like yeah worth it worth it i say so i'm excited for when rock city comes out yeah. spring with mikey cool. 
or fall or summer maybe late i'm excited yeah. for mamra the ever living uh yeah because he's nine inches yeah he's so gonna be insane. that's gonna be insane to have on the shelf Hovering over everyone. Yeah. So speaking of Mamra the Ever Living. Yes. Uh, we got to watch. We dived into some Thundercats. Mm-hmm. And we did a, it was a five part. It's called Thunder Cubs. Yeah. It made no sense. It was named Thunder Cubs. No. But this was some of the best episodes we've seen of recent. It, it was so refreshing because it had gotten to the point where like, oh, we got to watch Thundercats because we got to move through it. <laughs> Uh, and then this was like, oh, wow, this was actually, I, I didn't zone out or try to fall asleep or yeah. like, what do we, what would you, would we just watch something? Uh, it was very exciting. It was. Good action. I mean, even had, you know, multiples of the villains and a lot, mm-hmm. it actually had a lot going on, but it was It didn't exciting. overuse certain ones. It kind of pulled everything together. Yeah. So the idea was that Mamura finally got fed up. Yeah. And he was just like, you know what? I'm going to go back to where it all started. Because if the Thundercats hadn't come here, then Third Earth would still be mine. Well, because we had yeah, the idea, though, that he wanted the Sword of Plundar, which was buried. It, it was actually what had caused Thunder to explode yep. because Jaga threw it into the pit of, of the planet. Which is awesome, too, because when we were watching that, we'd seen the episode of Thundercats Roar that made fun of it. Yeah. That Jaga just like was like, well, I have this mighty sword. I don't know anyone else to get it. I'm going to cast it into the fiery pits. It's like throwing the one ring. Yeah. But instead, you've got a giant blade that just goes down and like slices the core and it explodes. Yeah. And we're like, oh, okay, whatever. And then, oh, that's why. Yeah. It's because it's from the original series. Yeah, and yeah, it was like the, the two grade of the power feel and it, yeah. made it, it blew up. And so he decided he was going to go back there. And he took his little TARDIS pyramid and yeah. flew to <laughs> Thandera and uh, started reforming. Uh, bits and pieces of the planet so that he could try to get the sword back and then treasure of treasure roman thundercat treasure Thund- no no it was thunder and treasure treasure of thunder treasure and thunder which in that treasure had the book of omens yes so that's going to be the next piece so like now there's book like of omens and random bling there's like a, uh, a hook now to keep watching because right? like now he's got the book of omens like uh, we got to have like find out that like there's more snarfs. Yes, like a whole world of snarfs. And the uh, Thundercats had a magical flute that yep. could control animals, which it probably helped domesticate the snarfs to begin with. Apparently, <laughs> they were uh, yeah, they were it's like little pan poop. Uh, yeah, pan yeah. Flute. So. It was all, um, but it's, you know what's weird? Snarf. It's one of those weird things where it's like so they're called snarfs, but like so snarf is called snarf, but his race is called snarf. They also use the word snarf. Yes. But his name's actually Osbert. Yes. And but he's chosen to go by, by snarf. snarf instead because he doesn't like Osbert. Yeah. But they're so racist. Like why snarfs. choose to go by snarf? I think we should just be all calling ourselves humans then. Hey, human. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, we would have to say human all the time. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. It's, and then it just sounds random- ridiculous. And then randomly use human. Like. Yeah. For like other things, other things, yeah, yeah. that doesn't even make sense. Well, and then his cousin, with uh, yeah, nephew. And his nephew, Snarfer, yes, yeah, Snarfer. What? Like I, it doesn't even make any sense. He also has a name too, but he chooses Snarfer. Yeah, yeah, it does not. And they were all hit. introducing themselves, and they all have like fancy uh, accents and like fancy names. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they were being used to dig for the treasure. And uh, the mutants show up on the, you know, spit of of Thundera that has reformed and chaos ensues. And then in the meantime, the uh, lunatics are back trying to take over um, the, the base back. The lair the and the, uh, and the tower. The tower. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a good, pretty good. Attack There's a lot things. going on. Yeah. Right. And so then. The Thundercats, so here's on the fourth episode why it was called Thunder Cubs. Yeah, four out of five. You know, finally we got the title. The uh, Panthro... Uh, Tiger and Chitara all, and Snarf. And, and Snarfer. And Snarfer all why, um, ended up in this, like, 
valley of youth or whatever yeah and they all turned into um children child versions of yes. themselves and they totally forgot about everything else and so lion the sword protected him so he didn't change but he was able to grant them the ability to understand the importance of being a thundercat and go from there and so then they were able to still fight and do something so they basically left and went back to third earth to help protect the tower and uh, the lair and he stayed there for this awesome battle with uh, mumra yeah it was pretty epic like that sort of plunder is ginormous. It was, yeah. I'm excited that the toy comes with that too. The sort of plunder, so we yeah. can have epic battles. Epic battle. Hey, I forgot. This was something that happened in the first episodes when they were coming off planet. Mm. When they got blasted was the Vulture Man's ray mm-hmm. that turned them into like stone while they were flying in the feliner. Mm-hmm. And Snarf had to try to figure out how to get the sword in Lino's hand. Yeah. And his hand was like over his crotch. It was hilarious. And then he just started shooting like lasers out of his crotch sword. (laughs) Yeah, it was uh, (laughs) it was hilarious. Well, at one point in the episode before that, if we're going to talk about some things like that, um, him and Panthro were uh, fighting. They were looking for Mumra in uh, in his pyramid and Panthro had his uh, nunchucks out. And it was this perfect shot. It was it was far a distance behind him and looking up like looking up from behind him and he had the the blue um nunchuck just hanging right between his legs and yep. all you could see was the nunchuck too like the the blue part itself so it looked like it was part of his pants and he just had this ginormous part of his pants part of just just this ginormous uh piece there hanging there and it was hilarious i like how you skirt around it you're just like this this thing this schlong was the word i was thinking because that is the ridiculousness of it. <laughs> there you go. Schlong. Schlong. That was the one you that chose. That was the one I that chose. That was the one I chose. Your Rolodex of... Uh... Gravy spigot? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't seem appropriate. Because <laughs> it was schlong? It was schlong. Got it. <laughs> Got it. So yeah, the... Yeah. But those episodes were really fun. It was really good to get back and have them battle and all that. And, you know, and then they used the uh, the cave of aging for like the 50 millionth yeah, time. Yeah, Kiddo was like, oh, they're probably going to go back to there. Oh, yeah, we were right. And they went back there. But well, uh, and they just left Mumra up on uh, on uh, Thundera. Yeah. Um, Lino just peaced out. And uh, we're like, wow, is is he going to stay? It? Like, is that going to actually like carry through to a big problem? No. The evil well, he spirits. fell into he fell into that pit, in yeah. the evil spirit pit, right? And the evil spirits just brought him back to Earth. Yeah, so like it's like it's, it's like kind such of a like, cop out. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like it's really like you almost can't destroy too deep. Yeah, for a kid show to be like evil is always there, and it's it doesn't take long to come back. I was just like, you think you defeat it, but you were wrong. <laughs> How's that for a child psyche? Yeah, no. no, And it's true because he never stays gone long. No. He's, I mean, in in the theme of this is there was always evil. Yeah. It is eternal. And you always have to find someone there that's willing to fight the overarching eternal evil. evil. Yep. That's some deep stuff right there. Yeah, right? Mm. It's it's more than you want to grasp. Yeah. It's not really, not really the... Uh, like so um, warm and fuzzies. Speaking of dark and twisty, uh, other TVs we shows we had watched totally about face and go away from the cartoons and the other aspect of our days. Uh, we watched uh, on Netflix uh, the I don't remember what it's called. Crime scene. That sounds familiar. It was about the uh, uh, disappearance of Elisa Lamb at the Cecil Hotel. Yep. Back in what twenty twelve. 2013 2013 um and it's a uh, four-part so, documentary yeah. series so she was if you haven't watched it or if you don't know the story about that she was a um a student up from vancouver here that had gone on a trip down to southern california and wanted to uh visit la she ended up there and she ended up staying at the cecil hotel which has a very dark history. It's uh, right by Skid Row. It's got uh, a lot of low-income housing as well in it. Um, it's a very cheap hotel. 
Uh, it's good for travelers and that type of stuff. Um, but it has, it's been the, what the general manager talking, she, there was like 80 deaths just in, in one year. In, like it's an obscene amount of stuff that happens. Um, night serial that goes, killers have stayed not, there. Not a night that goes by that the cops aren't called because yeah. they also have, they were, they had to keep the hotel, um, for like long-term rentals as well. Yeah. So some of the floor, there's only like two or three floors that are actually like, this stay on main, which is like more like the ho- ho- um, hostess hostel hostel. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of like the nicer type stuff. And yeah. then there's, yeah, there's a couple floors, what three floors of the long term like rentals. Yeah. Idea. And then, and then, and then, then the hotel, all, uh, but they well, all yeah. share an elevator. Yeah. They all share the elevators, which is just hilarious to me. Um, but so she unfortunately went di- had disappeared yeah. and it was the uh, solving of her disappearance and the eventual finding of her um and then you know trying to solve her her death because there's a lot of like you know mystery with it too because like so the cecil hotel was the basis for the hotel in american horror story yes um they did a good job of representing it yeah in the lobby and all that Mm -hmm. so so there's there's, because it's it's you know there's been lots of deaths over the years yes uh night Night stalker Stalker stayed stayed there 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 was also another um serial killer woman killer uh i can't remember his name jorgensen yeah he came over from europe and um and just there's you know everything and anything going on in that hotel yeah so um i think the big couple of things that take away more from the show now i think i think honestly for four uh episodes hour-long episodes was too much it could have knocked a whole episode off it easily could have just been like an hour and a half or two hour movie yeah like like documentary like i think i think there was a little yeah, bit of the sensational minimum, the the second and third episodes needed to be blended together there was yeah way too much of other people's stories and sensationalism of people getting so attached to the yeah. solving of it um once it moved away from that then it was like oh yeah this is interesting so yeah. when you and learning about the hotel and some of its history all that sort of stuff was interesting so well i think one thing that was interesting was to see the fact of um how big the skid row is in la i had no idea and that it's like a no man's land 56 and, blocks yeah i i was just i was in shock yeah and seeing very um in your face shots of of the of the actual streets there and the real people that yeah. live there and the tent cities and the I had no idea yeah that it was so big and so bad and we it's just so accepted yeah and it's just I I I don't even have words for how it's how horrible that is yeah you know and I, there's people that have lived there their entire lives yeah you know I think the other thing that would take away from it too was how dangerous getting caught up in trying to with internet with with the internet yes. that was something i just i just thought of now is how dangerous the internet can be for those that aren't part of a situation aren't privy to all the information can yes. be right it's try people who are trying to solve something that don't have the facts or aren't willing to understand that they don't have all the facts but it's like the idea that they throw out an idea online and then that then other people get on and they they glob to that and then they do stupid things just right? because it's on the internet does not mean it's true right <laughs> so um but at the end of it is also all, all about mental health and how it is serious and we need to not brush off the idea of mental illness um, well it's amazing what we are capable of doing to ourselves um when mental illness comes into play yeah you know how much harm our own body can actually our own brain can actually cause us yeah and it is not something to take lightly it is not something to um you know um just not worry about you know medication is important and if you have anyone that has uh you know that if you're if you're close to anyone who is on medication you know being not uh judgy but making sure they are taking their medication mm-hmm. you know it's just well, you know. making sure that they're okay and keeping up on them yeah right expired especially now oh yeah especially now with all the quarantines and stuff like that like it's a really good idea to make sure we're we're right focused on on a community even if we can't be in person but we can still be online yeah um to each other yeah to try to make sure we're all okay yeah that was definitely the biggest takeaway from that is making sure that uh that is not ignored yeah and uh because that's that's definitely that was the downfall of everything right mm-hmm. so 
So yeah, it was an interesting, it was an interesting thing because there's a lot of, see, there's a lot of sensationalism around it and it kind of like pulled out the, the supernatural conspiracy ideas. Well, and what I didn't like is the, so much of that focus on the sensationalism and those people that ended up causing so many problems Mm. for other people people in, within the investigation by them being part of throwing out conspiracies and deciding i know they weren't possibly specifically the ones um, yeah. but that decide that things are this certain way and then finding out that you know you were dead set on an idea but it was because you didn't have all the facts yeah and well it's the same idea of like just like okay, watching a trailer and being like coming up with the ideas of how it's going to go and then it doesn't go the way you want you've like had months to sit there and stew over how you yeah. think it should go and then it doesn't end up the way you want. And yeah. you're like, well, no, they're wrong. I need to change Well, and that. that's why the, the problem of having trailers out too long, too early or too much of it, where you yeah. get, you were almost, where you get so much information that you assume you have enough yeah. to make the whole story together. Yeah. Right. And so it's a good reminder for any of us before we make, you know, jump to conclusions and, you know, even even about people, you know, it's that constant reminder for, you know, I see it online a lot, too, is that, you know, not judging someone for their actions um, necessarily or, you know, uh, because you don't know exactly what they're going through for something. Um, maybe they're more reserved or they're more quiet. Maybe there's a reason for it. Mm-hmm. Um and so you never know everyone's story. And this this made sense, too. They, they had all these um people who had glommed on to reading all of her blogs and everything assumed they knew her mm-hmm. and they knew what she was capable of and what she wasn't capable of. But you know, their, her family knew things about her that uh, she didn't have online. Yeah. You know, that was important information that the police weren't just throwing out there. Yeah. And, you know, so that reality that people, we all wear, we, we choose what light and darkness we show the world yep. and we, you know, not everyone knows everything, yep. right? Well, it's and the idea of we all wear masks yeah. and we all wear multiple masks. Filters and, and everything, right? right? You know, so our, our, the mask we wear to work is not the mask that we show our loved ones. It's not the ones we show our friends. Exactly. Right. Um, we, the one we don't wear when we're by ourselves, right? Like, yeah. So, so just that, that reminder there that, uh, you know, so the best you can is, is at least ask um you know how someone's doing and be receptive and open to what they do want to share um and and go from there yeah totally so 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 interesting watch though yeah so the main event let them fight fight (laughs) you just so badly want to say that i will say it again when godzilla yeah versus kong yeah so yeah we needed to do a preparation for this and kiddo was uh, very interested in the idea of watching godzilla and godzilla king of monsters mm-hmm. so we uh we jumped into those broke into the rewatch of the Redmesia. i hadn't heard that for so long i know um i remember really enjoying godzilla mm-hmm. uh when it first came out and uh quick review here i still really enjoyed it there you go we're done yeah mm-hmm. Main event. So, nice, quick, easy. 20, 2014, uh, America's second try at Godzilla came out mm-hmm. after the uh, I showed them the trailer for the 98 Godzilla. and He tried to melt our brain with it. They, they weren't receptive to it. <laughs> <laughs> so we do not speak of that one. And 2014, Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, no, you know what? I, with re-watching it, I forgot how much I really liked this one. Yeah, like it was... It was, yeah, even more in our face. Like, wow, this is like really good cinematography. I and really liked a lot of the shots. Yeah. I, I, I enjoyed the monsters being more in the background and hidden and seeing all that. You like the news shots when it was just them fighting in the background? Yeah, like, going like, like, and and like, because it, it was like very real almost like people like not paying attention to it and they're like or on the tv just, yeah like, we just like assume that it can't be real or, or something the, yeah blend, right we just, we just out, don't right? care right yeah. um and just some of those shots that you know they kept things more hidden like it it definitely has the feeling of like an independent movie but with a hollywood budget yeah you know and as much as maybe the monsters weren't all up in your face and there was a lot of human stuff I really like the 2014 Godzilla. Like, I really like the way it was done. And, you know, the characters that were in it were quite enjoyable. Yeah. Like, as much as, like, there's a lot of humans, there's not a lot, really. It just it's sort not, of... Yeah, it's not really the, based on them yeah, too much. No. Um, 
it's mainly just that one dude. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and even with that, it's, you know, it is the struggle, of course, of trying to figure out how we can try to defend ourselves uh, and, and letting go of some of that balance. And our, our, the human nature is a struggle to protect itself mm-hmm. um, and, and dealing with that. But it was it was definitely it felt like humanity and as a whole, not yeah. one individual person or anything like that. Yeah. So um, the whole time through it, when Godzilla started showing up and fighting, uh, kiddo kept saying epic he epic. he was just oh, away. That was his epic. face was hilarious that was his his word for the movie series was was epic i think he did it with kong too yeah he really really enjoyed it. he he loved the movie yeah um he just uh, he even really appreciated the art aspect yeah. for it and yeah. he was just blown away by the size and the the fighting scenes and the and the everything like that right? well cuz there's so, nothing really jokey about it which is no. nice you know whereas They're all like very serious whereas like kong there was lots of jokes mm-hmm. right this one here is is dead serious there's like not any humor in it at yeah. all it's it's like yeah. you know um, There's a lot of people that would have died. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. You you see that and you think like. Watch the buildings go down. The and buildings just... and the tsunamis and the. Yeah. Just all the different locations that get attacked. Yeah. You know. There's a lot of death. There's a lot. Because <laughs> just, just, just those monsters, those little beasties walking through places. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, they, they like walking through Vegas there like. Just buildings just collapsing and right and through Hawaii and San Francisco, like like and then even the beginning then with 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 over in Japan and the reactor and all that, like Yeah. It's just a lot of destruction. Yeah. Like a lot a lot going on for sure. So I thought you know, it's just it's it was really well done. Yeah, like I, I was really happy with rewatching it. I was like, you know, this is this is still an impressive film. Yeah. Um, and I, I highly recommend it because it's even though the monster stuff is more in the background, it just gives it a different feeling. Well, and you know what? It's still like you still really like Godzilla as much as he's destroying things. Mm-hmm. It still gives a good sense of the monsters yeah. are the bad guys, the Motus were they? Yeah. And um, and the and with Godzilla being a good guy right yeah and kiddo was so upset when the humans were trying to hurt him mm-hmm. um you know and it was and I had to explain to him like it only makes sense though I mean it's there's going to be a very few amount of people that can try well, to his, rationalize his, about his, it but his foot but, is like the size of our house yeah the sheer size of it is is terrifying and you know, I'm like there's no way every step he takes he doesn't kill like two something. people or- yeah exactly I mean he's destroying everything right yeah. and and it takes a lot for someone to see the overall good and that's what the ken watanabe character is like yeah you know no he's here to restore balance these yeah. things aren't supposed to be here right like, and and it shows though that we have a hard time as humans understanding the idea of balance though we we try to play god all the time yeah. oh yeah and we mess with balance and we don't like nature to just find that equilibrium right we are constantly fighting against the equilibrium and so i think that's part of it too is that it's difficult for us to understand that concept yeah Um, but i love that idea uh and that that uh overall principle in this story is the the idea of the equilibrium and nature finding a way to restore itself and how you know as you know they're old and ancient and buried now because of the radioactivity and they found a way to survive in something like that. And that's why they're not wandering around is mm-hmm. because there isn't the same amounts of radioactivity. And then the idea that we wake things up because we're throwing off nature, you know, yeah. we're creating radioactivity that wasn't supposed to be there. And we draw them out. And it's, you know, it's, it's just that exact problem where, you know, we, we created the unbalance. Yeah. And uh, so I like that. I just I love that type of stuff. Right. So, yeah, like it, you know, after it, what, watching Kong and this, I'm like, yeah, MonsterVerse, I'm all in. Right. Right. Uh, and then we moved on to, you know, he was like, he was like, well, we have to do the next one. Right. Yeah. So we just did this weekend. We did both. Uh, we did uh, King of Monsters, uh, the sequel, mm-hmm. uh, which came out in 2019. And we had actually taken him to theaters to see this one. He had forgotten. <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> uh, so it was like a brand new experience for him. Uh, I think it was fun, too, because then he was able to see the with having seen Godzilla now and and it gives it a different perspective. now, yeah. Right. So, yeah, totally. Uh, it was fun to watch them back to back. 
you know, this one here is directed by uh, Michael Dari of Trick or Treat and Krampus. Uh, but one thing I noticed with this one, as much as we got to see more monster action, it felt more Hollywood mm-hmm. than like the other one felt like, as I say, like an independent movie, but with a Hollywood budget. This one just felt like the bloated Hollywood sequel. Yeah. And which was really weird to feel like, yes, I'm excited to see more monster action, but everything else. I like the humans more in Godzilla than I liked any of the humans in uh, King of Monsters. Well, because the human story took more precedent as well. Yes. So they 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 increase the human story and the monster. story. Yeah. And so like that was why Godzilla. He's literally just trying to get home. Yeah. You know, he went, you know, he, he got back from being in the, in the, the Navy or whatever it was. And then he gets called to Japan because his dad's broken into this thing. He goes over there. They get attacked. You know, he hops on a transport that takes him to Hawaii. Yeah. He, he gets attacked. And he's so just, he joins he's the army. And then, home, yeah. And he's right? trying to just go wherever. And then he's then, then he his duty comes in. It's like, OK, what can I do to help? Because he's a tech. But right? yeah, he has special skills. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not it's not some big bloated human story for yeah. it. Right. And it's just kind of a series of unfortunate events there. Yeah. And, uh, opposed to, you know, it, it's interesting because with, with King of Monsters, it shows the fallout of San Francisco and the trauma that would have been caused for yeah. people that died. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they lost their young Family's son broken, and they are broken. And, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, there's, they tried to develop a story between all three, the mom, the daughter and the, and the, the husband. Yeah. And the dad. And, but then you, and get get, a sense then you have Monarch shows up more. And then you yeah. actually have like a bad guy, like covert then, yeah. dark ops, like bad guy section that makes you feel like you really should know more about him, but you don't know anything about him. Right. Right. Uh, so it's just and then you have, yeah, you're learning more about Godzilla. And then you have all these other monsters that are showing up. And, uh, and they yeah, do a it's, lot it's definitely of monsters a lot, in this one. A like, lot more. You got, you got Rodan. You got uh, Mothra. Mothra. You <laughs> She's got my favorite. Ghidorah. Mm-hmm. You know. And are you still... You can probably still, go find our King of Monsters episode and hear Katie gush over Mothra again. Yeah. Right? It's so cute. It was... See, it, was, it turned out to be... We watched it on Valentine's. Yeah. And it turned out to be a, a yeah. romance. There you go. <laughs> Love. Love and monsters. <laughs> Uh, but the, some of the action is really cool in this one, yeah. right? It's the idea, too, where Ghidorah is from outer space. He's not from Earth. He's yeah. an intrusive species. Yeah. Right? So. I thought that was a cool twist with that. Yeah. It's like, that explains why he is so different and, you know, why Godzilla is still the king for mm-hmm. it is because and, and how different the monsters act mm-hmm. when he is acting king. Yeah. Um, I thought, you know, that just... It was a cool way of showing. And the, the one thing I did like, I liked the human with, with the uh, dad, with his his understanding of, of predators. Yeah. Well, Kyle, the Kyle Chandler, his his that was great. His because, role was the one I liked. In yeah. It. And uh, I, I like that because he was as much as he his story was interesting because he went from hating them to understanding the importance and still the reverence of it. Yeah. Right. And like you could have almost even like, I don't know, maybe you couldn't have, but I don't know. Definitely get rid of of the the kid. She was <laughs> right? pointless. Pointless. Like literally. It was the only pointless. thing that got him into it. If it wasn't the kid that wasn't there, then he wouldn't have he wouldn't have shown up, right? To help. True, I guess. He was only that. doing it for a daughter, but 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 otherwise. Yeah. You know. I think they wasted the money on the actress. Yes. Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. So um, But yeah, I like I I like that idea with this the science aspect of mm-hmm. things and and showing their their the animal nature of them that just because they're big doesn't mean they don't follow the same Predatory. patterns and, and rules yeah. and everything right so um so there was still a lot of a cool and again a lot of people died a lot of people died especially when all of the monsters woke up yeah and just went ape shit everywhere. well rodan when he was flying through the city and just like the the air pressure and the wind alone just yeah, like the taking heat, out extreme heat just taking out everything and oh, was it goodness. was it rio or whatever or it was in mexico, mexico. I but just like whoosh. yeah you know but it makes me want toys though i want, I want toys yeah i watch I, 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 I really want one of those godzilla like i look at those yeah. i'm like yeah I, I totally i think kiddo would totally walk to toy traders and go get a godzilla right now too. <laughs> i want the pops when they come out so. the uh the new because uh, i love kong and i love godzilla and this yeah. is gonna just kill me having them fight 
Well, as we've seen in the trailer and stuff, and this is a spoiler if you haven't seen it, but it most likely is going to be um, they're going to end up teaming up at the end. Yeah. Uh, to fight but, Mecha Godzilla but or in, Mecha Ghidorah. Or Mecha Ghidorah, yeah. Right, because you, with watching the end credits scene, you know that Shady Underworld dude went and bought Ghidorah's head at the very end yeah. of King of Monsters. That's why you must always burn every last piece <laughs> of any monster, especially one that regenerates. Hydra. Hydras never die. Right? Yep. It's a very apt name for a Marvel there. Like, it's a really good use of Hydra. <laughs> Anyways. But yeah, no, the, the Funko, I, I want the 10-inch versions. Yeah. 10-inch ones, because those ones look really cool. <laughs> So that'd be fun to get. So, you know, if Toy Traders, you get those, hit us up. Yeah. We got to we gotta get us, get us some. I think we need that. I don't know where we're going to put them, but. No, no. But yeah, I think because I, I really love Kong and I really do love the Godzilla. Yeah. So they are pretty awesome. But it was fun to watch them, like fun watching both of them. Like, you know, it was exciting. Like, you know. Well, I, I love Kiddo's reaction. That was just I think so that's what wonderful. makes it like even if even if even if the second one isn't as good as the first one i think that's what makes it amazing is that just like watching him just get so enthralled and being like you know he's radioactive he's gonna explode and yeah he just well i remember the first time he shot the the laser beam out the like beam thing his eyes just about bogged out of his head he's like whoa he shoots like fire lightning yeah yeah (laughs) And then with uh, with Ghidorah shooting out the like flame lightning stuff, yeah. and he was just like, "Oh my goodness!" Right? That so was that was really cool. That the difference is is Godzilla has more artistic shots. Yes, more like framed, and they look like they almost start like they look like they could be like a drawing or a painting mm. that starts moving. Yeah, right? this one didn't have a lot of that, except for when God- Ghidorah was coming out of. Uh, the the silhouette of him showed yes. up in the cloud and then the lightning was coming like that was like probably was a the, few artistic shots yeah yeah you know or when mothra was coming down at that one, one. and see in those types of shots those are my favorite they look yeah. they look so regal right yeah. and majestic right and well even when uh, rodan went and parked himself back on the volcano after he was done like yeah and he goes down and and he bows down to Ghidorah and all that sort of stuff like those ones are um those are really cool shots yeah so. yeah so but i think that's the thing that's been fun is is have watching watching all these movies with kiddo and him getting super excited yeah. so i found i who knows if we'll watch them because we you know we have all the time in the world um <laughs> but uh the one station is playing some uh godzilla movies from the the seventies, I think it was, or the sixties. Oh goodness! So he showed me the one of them. It has like some <laughs> mecha thing and another. It's mecha Godzilla. Oh, it looks so bad. It's like super bad. Um, Power Ranger, like. Um, well, yeah, it's like thirty years prior. I know. <laughs> oh, but it'll be fun. It looks like robot chicken. Actually, is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but that'll be fun to show you guys because like those are some of the ones I watched before I you yeah. know we watched all those ones way back in the day when we had the good old VHS the video store back in my day yeah but see we don't have to watch those we can watch things like Godzilla yeah but Godzilla it's like a history also. lesson think how much you'll, you'll respect and understand well we'll just add it to our our Over queue suit men, you know yeah yeah <laughs> But yeah, so we're getting excited for uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, we're, we're caught up. We've watched all our, our pre-watch. So now we're just getting ready for that final showdown. Super exciting. Uh, so that'll be exciting to see. Yeah. So out of out of the MonsterVerse, wonder what is your favorite of the three that have been out so far? And who are you going to be rooting for Yeah. in Godzilla vs. Kong? So then we did something. Something we were going to do last weekend. Thanks, Simon. But uh, Katie didn't want to press play on it. So I did it. Did I? Or did you? No, I didn't. I didn't push that button. No, you didn't, huh? I I, did. I, I held. Didn't. I held strong. You're like, no, no. I was like. I even gave him an out. I, I was said, like a I'll, Scottish I'll warrior. I'll do it. Holding. <laughs> hold! I'll do it myself. You don't have to be involved. <laughs> and. Uh, no. This sound, conversation sounds like I'm like avoiding you of like, you know, not doing husbandry duties or something. <laughs> I'll just do it myself. Fine. Fine. <laughs> okay, Thanos. Um, no. Um, 
We watched The Notebook. It happened, man. It happened. It's been, it's been so long. I held out, but I finally gave in. So, um, what did you think of the opening credits with the? Oh my uh, god! The the water and the. It took birds. a lot of effort to not turn it off right then. I, I I honestly was thinking that it was going to be like an SNL skit. That's exactly. I was waiting for deep like moments. deep thoughts. With Jack Handy to start rolling across the goddamn screen in cursive and like some insightful thoughts about life. Like that's where it was. And I was trying to laugh at that moment to be like, it can't just be this. It can't just be this. Thank God it was not just that. I don't know, dude. Oh, it's okay. been a long time since we watched a full actual like romance movie that didn't have anything else really in it. Like there was no humor. No mix of anything, right? No action. You know. Yeah, no, there wasn't, huh? Yeah, there was no humor. No. It was humorless. No. At least our humor. Our humor at <laughs> all, yeah. They laughed, but uh oh. there was there okay, so I've watched it. My quick review, I don't care to watch it again. Um, I didn't hate it. Like, there's not like extreme anger towards it. Um, I'm glad that I've watched it just so that I understand. You can form your own opinion. Yeah. Uh, now I can see where memes have come from from it. So, you know, I you have just... my education and gifts from that. Um I definitely know that I like Ryan Gosling as he was older and and That's such a more, baby. more current now a little because baby he's, boy. he's baby. And I'm realizing then actually watching this, watching such an old movie like that, uh, how old I feel because it feels wrong to look at him in any sort of like, oh, he's cute because he feels like a child. It's like, no, I'm going to like him now because he's actually my, closer to my age now. So that, that was a weird thing. Like you said, an old movie. It was like 2004. I know, but... I guess that's old for some people, huh? But it's an older movie. For someone who's a current actor that I actually like now. Yeah. um, uh, So that was was a weird thing. Yeah. Um, But, uh, because I mean, if they're really, really old movies, you know, like Dirty Dancing is okay. You know, well, Patrick Swayze wasn't tiny. It wasn't like a baby at the time. Yeah. Dirty Dancing or something, right? But, um, um, but overall, um... I don't know. It just there was some good heart in it. And I could see the story, you know, evolving with the with the older couple and him telling the story. I'm like, OK, this has got to be it's him got, yeah, it was telling like the story right to there. her. OK, she doesn't understand it. She's got Alzheimer's and dementia of some sort. Um, so with that, you know that it would be it would have been super cruel if he was telling her the story, how he had hoped it had happened mm-hmm. and not of actually how it happened. So um, I was hoping through all of that. I'm like, well, at some point they've got to come back together because otherwise, what's the point of this? Yeah. Um, but then there was a certain amount of me that kind of wanted it to be like this, like La La Land, where it was like, what could have been, you know, mm. it was something that was really intense and, and wonderful, but. I kind of was rooting that she went to her, you know, at the time fiance because she seemed really happy with him. Yeah. Um, but then you feel bad for for Noah because he, he was just completely distraught and lost um, and just a shell of a man type thing. So it's like it was kind of a conflicting feelings of what you really wanted. Yeah. Um, but then I, I felt like a little gypped that I never got to see any of their life afterwards. It was mm. like, OK, now we're together. And then they died. And then they died. <laughs> Like, well, apparently you had kids and you're obviously still love each other because when she was lucid, everything was great. Um, but uh, that was a little sad. Uh, it was interesting to see how quickly as soon as she saw that house was done, how she just dropped her whole life and just became like a teenager again. Yeah, that was an interest. Uh, that kind of felt a little real, actually, mm. of how how someone could be. It was like she was literally just waiting for for the yeah. in again type thing. Right? Yeah. Um, and it was like her her understanding that that was what it was supposed to be. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's a whole lot of feelings in there. But I love the uh, the scene in the war where uh, Gosling looks at his buddy that's 
clearly been blown up, but we're in a PG movie. So like nothing. And he just has has that look of like, dude, you're in pieces. And then it cuts. Right. It was the weirdest look ever. And like, you know, he's a better actor than that. Not back then. Apparently but apparently not back then. Yeah. Um, he'd just been making out for like 30 days straight. Yeah. So he just didn't know what to it's do like, at that oh, point. Oh, I'm supposed to be dramatic and like horrified. <laughs> yeah. His not his like charismatic. Was, his face was so like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't know what we're That's talking about. That's your intestines. Go and find that scene. His face is Dude. totally off character for the scene. Yeah. Yeah, it's there was nice. another one, too, that we were laughing about. Yeah, I can't even remember what it was, but uh, yeah, you know, it's not a bad movie. It's just not it's just not our type of film, because even when it comes to the there was no one stuff, in spandex, there was no Iron well, Man. Like for me, <laughs> there's for no my, lightsaber. My romance needs to have like, a, you know, OK, think of Dirty Dancing. There's there's it's sexy romance. I don't know how much time many times I've heard Dirty Dancing in the last like. <laughs> Dirty dancing. Yeah. Um, and then Grease is another one of my favorites, but it has humor and action in it. Yeah. And it's is not action. Yet? They race on Thunder Road. There's action. Wait, OK. But yeah, they, they race and there's OK. There's I like guess, the parties and then like long distance running. <laughs> <laughs> I always love that scene where he's trying to find the sports for him. Um, but anyways, um, but yeah, there's just the different sense. Like this is totally not my style of romance movie. At and all. she didn't need a hanky. Take that Netflix. No, nope. not even welling up at all. Like I had zero emotional reaction. I'm not going to lie. Like there was like, huh? OK. Nothing. And I can I cry really easily now. She cried so. at Godzilla, dude. <laughs> like King of Monsters. Mothra gets hurt. She's like, oh, oh, God. Mother, mother, my babies, my babies. Oh, oh. I was. I was really and, sad. But then, you know, the notebook, she's like, Psh, Okay, I even felt bad about the monsters uh, in Godzilla f- when the eggs all got burnt up. <laughs> like, it made me super sad. So the villain of the movie, their spawn dies, and Katie's just like, <gasps> I, The mom and me was just like, all of her babies just got burned up. She was just must have been horrified inside. I was like super choked up about that. And the notebook is like, whatever. <laughs> so stupid teenage love. This is, this is where my life it's is. It's all fake. <laughs> but monsters. That's where that's where that's my heart where... is. Uh, so, yeah, we did it. We did um, it. We 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 did it. Rip the bandage off. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> that wound is wide open now. <laughs> so uh, still definitely recommend later Ryan Gosling films, <laughs> current versions of things, or Dirty Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like a like the Die Hard Christmas moment. Yeah. Yeah. Who your Christmas movie? Die Hard. Yeah. You want to go watch a romance? Go watch Dirty Dancing. It's there got everything. Go. It's got everything. I loved her. She was trying to describe to Kiddo because um, he's like, what is Dirty Dancing? <laughs> he was and to... not not Dirty Dancing as the movie. What is like, the act of Dirty Dancing? Why is, the... is it called Dirty Dancing? It was, why is it called Dirty Dancing? Yeah. Why? Why do they? How do you dance dirty, Mom? <laughs> yeah. Like, OK, what do I use as my adjectives to compare it to? <laughs> you put reasoning? mud on your body? <laughs> No, no, Katie doesn't go for the easy, like, it's a mud wrestling movie. Oh, no. No, no. no she I goes, she goes, it's like when you lift, she lifts him up and they're like all close and she slides down his body and they're all like. I did Dig- not do that. <laughs> you did? I did not. She totally did. You described that scene in well, vivid detail. I don't know why. Why? Oh, maybe I was just talking about it from, uh, from that other movie, uh, from Crazy Stupid Love. When I was mentioning about it. Or maybe I just... No, it was because that song the was music, on. The music video. And then I was just like reliving it. I spaced off and relived the dance scene. The, yeah. the final yeah. scene of Dirty Dancing. That's why. I'm not completely, you know, overwhelmingly obsessed with that film at all. Not at all. I, okay. Back when I was a child, I had a dress that was my Dirty Dancing dress. <laughs> okay. So it was this like pink cotton jumper thing. That it was like a, the, it was a flowy, like, 
skater skirt and then it had like suspendery type things that would go up so you had to put a shirt on underneath it type thing like it was well no it had a little bit of a leotard thing because i always wanted to be like a ballerina or a dancer or some sort right so it had like it was just this like basic skater looking dress almost and it was this light pink and it was my dirty dancing dress and i loved that thing nice so much nice and yeah i never wore it out the time of your life i i yeah and I was way too young to really appreciate it. I mean, when I think about that now, <laughs> um, it's super, super way above my age when I should have been watching. Thanks, Mom. But uh, still. <laughs> I think we all do that. We all let her make our kids watch movies, you know, because we yeah. ourselves are tired of watching things, right? Yeah. So. Then we cross the line. We don't realize that we can't uncross. <laughs> And then, and then it just goes downhill from there, right? Yeah. Look at all your action movies, and mm-hmm. so. well, to the point where like kiddo is like asking to watch Justice League, right? Well, because he understands Christopher Nolan movies better than he understands like kid movies now. Yeah, so he watched the trailer for Interstellar because they're doing a lot of space stuff, and he looks at us and goes, "I want to watch that." <laughs> like that's like 159 minutes dude like yeah he's like that's nice we will be watching that next movie night <laughs> i have decreed it yeah right make it so i was so eloquent about it yes. too like sometimes he's just so like non-responsive and then now he's just like yes <laughs> well, on the next movie night we shall <laughs> tomorrow we shall be watching interstellar and then we will discuss the trials and tribulations of you know interdimensional space travel well then there's other times where we ask him something serious and he's like okay yeah sure it's like chad yeah right okay cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, that doesn't stop being funny either right uh yeah so um okay <laughs> so that's been the episode okay <laughs> but really no seriously i think we're done yeah, pretty much. We got, you know, like, go watch some Godzilla. Go watch some monsters beat down. Get it on. Forget about notebooks unless you're drawing weird don't, pictures. Don't watch them. the notebook. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> She's just like, slap that one down. Go watch Godzilla. Go watch Godzilla. Go watch Godzilla King of Monsters. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Thanks for wa- watching. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Hey, you might be. I don't know. <laughs> We might have a camera in here for all I know. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, you know, check on your peeps because, you know, that's what we learned. Mental health matters. And it does. Um, stay safe. All and, that. And uh, all that, you know, and a bag of chips. <laughs> thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening. Want more rad content? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. And remember, be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes!